so I'm going to be talking about responsive design and uh, the end user. So it's you know uh, the gentleman before me was talking about uh, mobile first, and and one way I think about this is to you know responsive design might be one of the ways you implement your mobile first strategy. Um, so. A little bit about myself. I work for this company called Mobile Tech. We do have a booth in the in the next door room. So um, what we do is, you know, we make mobile users happy um, uh, with our publishing platform and a mobile web uh, software developers kit. So um, please step by. And now back to <coughs> responsive web design. Does anyone you know, know what this is? Have you you know hands up on responsive web design? Okay, that's good. Uh, problem is that responsive web design, as defined by Ethan Marcotte, it doesn't really, you know, give anything extra to the to the end user. The end user really doesn't, you know, don't care. It doesn't solve any problems for for the end user. Uh, so yeah, as it says, you know, you can turn responsive web design into a religion, which is almost, you know, it's almost a religion out there right now by, you know, front-end developers. But, uh, you know, still the end user does not care. That's, uh, that's the fact. So it, it's mostly a developer thing, you know. Um, this is a way for, for web developers to actually, you know, do mobile development and, and, and tablet development, if you, if, if you will. So a great example on that is uh, uh, BBC. Um, hey, I can resize my browser window. That's cool. Uh, they recently made this uh, this new website, mo mobile website, or you know, call it whatever you will, for um, for tablet users and mobile users. And this stuff scrolling over the screen now is uh, the feedback they got. Um, almost 99% negative feedback. You can probably, the, you use it closer, can, can read some of the feedback here. Um, users, you know, before, they, they loved the, the, you know, mobile site that they got. You know, it solved all their problems. And suddenly BBC comes along, you know, implementing this fancy new responsive website, uh, which completely failed. Um, there's a link at the bottom there, so, so it, it's really good feedback uh, for anyone to read, actually. Um, so there's a link at the bottom there, and I'll, I'll tweet the link afterwards as well. Um, so, um, what did what did the end users uh, complain about? Well, you know, it might you know look fancy and all that kind of stuff, but but you know, the content was not accessible. They wanted you know read news stories, of course. Um, so. Users care about the content and how this content is, is presented. Um, so, you know, takeaway, key takeaway from that is that, you know, responsive web design doesn't necessarily mean that this is, you know, automatically mobile friendly or uh, future friendly was another term that was, uh, was used here. Um, these graphs uh, uh, shows that, um, you know, Responsively designed websites uh, are, you know, in in some cases even larger on mobile devices than they're on on uh, desktop devices. You know, you're downloading more data to to mobile devices than you're doing on on um, uh, a desktop device, uh, and that's not good because you know bandwidth and all that kind of stuff on uh, on mobile. So in some cases, responsive web design is actually bad for the end user, bad for the user experience. So, yeah, responsive web design is, is not the silver bullet for, for, you know, mobile websites. So this is kind of, you know, the current state or the, you know, the value stream, value chain um, for, for publishing. Now, you have this uh, not so bright editor. Any editors in the room? Hope not. I apologize. Uh, and you have, a, you know, old-fashioned content management system. And, you have a you know web server who's you know serving the web and that's it, and at the end you have this you know magical device which you know solves any problem. You know you're leaving everything up to the device. How should you know this device present the content? Um, so 
um, yeah, you know, what about you know speed, data download, and all, all that uh, all that stuff? You're leaving all the decisions up to up to the device, and that might not be a smart thing because you know downloading way too much data, processing too much on the client with CSS and JavaScript and all that kind of stuff. Um, makes the site go slow and it's expensive for the end user to download and so forth and so forth. So this is the current state. <coughs> um, usability or user experience, what is that? You know, um, simply explain this is, uh, you know, I'm trying to do that here, it's, you know, if the site is you know snappy and relevant and available and, and cheap, it's you know it's fairly usable. Um, and the best way uh, I think to you know define usability is you know the process of making the end users come back. Um, so with that in mind, and we also know that end users really care about the content, uh, the purpose uh, uh, of the site or application. Uh, let's play with the word responsive, you know? Um, maybe we should, you know, make the full value chain more responsive here. You know, respond to the actual, you know, device in the hands of the user consuming this content. So, we should, you know, educate the editor, the guy or, you know, person producing this content. Um, so, so that he or she is able to produce the content for, for multiple contexts or, or multiple you know, use cases. Um, and CMS, you know, uh, where, where are the CMS vendors in this? You know, they're, all the CMS systems we're using today, they're old fashioned. Uh, if you see a CMS system with a Visivig editor, that's you know, the first cue to you guys to no thank you. Um, structured content, very important. Um, and also, imagine if you know content could hint upstream in value uh, in the in the value chain here, how this content is best presented on different devices. The, make the content itself intelligent. Then metadata is wanting, but but you know what kind of metadata? Um, I think that you should we should you know append um, information about you know. This is a data table. How should this data table, or how should I present myself on uh, iPhone versus Android versus these and these, you know, screen sizes and so forth? Is it a touch screen? Then I should be presented like this. Uh, and then on the web server, obviously knows what kinds of uh, what kind of device it is in the other end. So he's, the web server is now able to optimize what he's sending. To the to the end user, so only necessary data is is downloaded to the to the client. So uh, it's going to be cheaper, and it's going to be faster because the client doesn't have to um, process so much JavaScript and CSS and so forth. But you know, end user still doesn't care about you know responsive web design, or it doesn't care about you know if it's a, this is a mobile dot something site. Uh, or if it's a specific device experience. Um, as long as the, the site or application is you know, usable or snappy and, uh, and relevant. So, um, key takeaway from this, you know, it's, you know, uh, responsive web design doesn't really you know, solve any problems for, for the end users. Um, Next step to kind of to, to use responsive web design as, as a technique uh, in, in really solving you know, some problems anyway for, for the end user is to do whatever you can server side. Do not leave everything up to the browser when it comes to deciding how the content is, is presented. And also experiment with the thought of, of making the full value chain more responsive. Input metadata. Keep the content structured. Stay away from Visavig, you know, editors where you can put everything in there. They're soon going to be that content is soon going to be uh, be useless. And uh, yeah, the ultimate goal here would be to make the the, the content reusable uh, across different uh, devices. So responsive, yeah, responsive through the full value chain. 
And uh, yeah, I'll tweet you the link, the BBC link. I, I uh, recommend reading that. And yeah, these slides will be available online as well. Thank you. <laughs>